Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, aka FXR, and I'm back with another video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, welcome. We have a lot of fun on this channel. If you've been here before, you know what's up. How you doing? <laughs> So I know I've been gone for a while. Your girl's been chopping this baby girl life. Enjoyed my birthday in Las Giddy, aka Lagos, Nigeria. Then I went to Dubai and had the time of my life with some friends. It was really, really fantastic. And I really needed this vacation so I could come back refreshed for y'all. As you can see, skin glowing. So the break was very necessary. Now I don't want to waste too much time. Today I just want to get our feet wet, you know, with a video all about why your protective styling routine is absolute trash. Now, without any further ado, let's get right into this video. But of course, before we do, please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know exactly what you want to see next. Now I know some of you are waiting for my modified sulfur eight video, as well as my wash day routine. Those videos are loading, so comment. Please be sure to share this video with all of your friends and loved ones. And last but never ever least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so that you know every time I post a new video. I'm going to be posting as frequently as possible since all of us are at home. So let's get right into this video. If you're not already, make sure you're following me on Instagram via Efik Zara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. -A. There you can see all my lovely pics and interact with me. And be sure to also follow me on Twitter via Efik Zara, the same E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. -A. There I talk to you all, I share my thoughts, and we're going to be doing a lot of giveaways very soon, so stay tuned. So as you can see, my hair is actually in a protective style. I did these faux locks here in Abuja, Nigeria, and the person I did them with is Winifred Agune. Now I'm going to post her details down below. If you're anywhere in Nigeria, I highly recommend that you do your hair with her. She's literally the only person, aside from one other woman, that I allow to do my hair in this country. I don't trust people with my hair and I'm very tender. Now that short digression aside, obviously my hair is in a protective style. Now this is the kind of protective style that works extremely well for me and I'm going to explain why. Now you all need to watch the entire video to understand exactly why this is something that's really fantastic for me and allows my hair to grow out. Now it's only been a month, but my hair, and I'm going to show you that in another clip, my hair has actually grown out about three quarters of an inch to an inch, depending on the area of my head, which is really astounding. Now for me, protective style is the way that I see the most retention of my length. Length retention ultimately is the process by which the hair on your head remains on your head. <laughs> if your hair is not growing, it's probably because it's breaking off at the ends. Everyone's hair grows from his, her, their scalp. So your hair is definitely growing. Now, if your hair is actually not growing from your scalp, I highly recommend you see a doctor because it means that there's something wrong internally. Now, with all of that being said, the very first reason why your protective styling routine is absolute garbage is because your protective styles aren't protecting anything. <laughs> People will say, oh yeah, I put my hair in a ponytail. That's a protective style. Not really sis, not really bro, not really other. Now, the reason why a ponytail is non-protective style is because your ends are out and about. And the whole point of protective styling is to increase the ability to retain length. And how do you retain length? By protecting the ends, which are the parts of the hair that are ultimately exposed to the elements more than the rest and that are more prone to splitting and breakage. Now for me personally, I'm not able to do braids really often unless I really monitor my hair. My hair is so long that braids are no longer very protective. They instead mangle my ends and chop them up. And it's not, it's not a good look. This kind of style, however, tucks my ends in. And my hair is twisted with just my hair inside of this lock. So that's double protection. Now a twist is already a fantastic protective style in my humble opinion. And then when you wrap something around the twist, you're just protecting your hair even more. Now I know you all are probably curious as to how I got these locks. If you all would like me to make a video down the line, let me know, I could do that. But you have to comment a green emoji. Now some styles that are actually protective aside from these kinds of very tension-free faux locks are buns, two-strand twists, certain types of braids, crochet braids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. And if you all can think of any more styles that are really protective, please list them down below so we can help each other out. Now, not everything is for everyone. Personally, for me, crochet tends to mess with my scalp because my scalp is so sensitive. 
and the Kanekalon or Toyokalon or whatever fiber is being used, rubbing against my scalp tends to irritate my scalp. My scalp also doesn't produce a lot of sebum, so that kind of style makes it difficult for me to actually moisturize my scalp and transitively moisturize my hair. Crochet braids work very effectively for a lot of people though, and personally, I would recommend them more if you produce a lot of sebum because then your scalp is going to be lubricating itself as it's in that kind of a style. Now, a lot of people talk about protecting the strands of your hair, but that's not the only part of your hair that's worth protecting. Your hair grows out of your head. What's on your head? Your scalp. So it's super important to take that time to protect your scalp. Please and thank you. Do not take your scalp help for granted. Now, if y'all have been here for a while, you know what my scalp is like. But for those of you that are new, my scalp is very tender, very sensitive, easily irritated, and likes to be very, very balanced or else I'm gonna have like a whole bunch of issues. 99 problems, including my scalp. And that's not cute. So what I do to make sure that my scalp is happy and healthy and protective styles is I'm very, very vocal with whoever is doing my hair, letting them know exactly how it needs to be approached so that there's no tension, so that my scalp isn't irritated, so that I'm literally just pain-free and happy. I don't need my braids to be super tight. I need them to be taut, but not pulling on my scalp so much that I can't sleep properly or go about my day in peace. For me, that kind of discomfort is a huge indicator that there's a problem with my scalp. Now, why am I telling you this? So that you know how you can care for your own hair and your own scalp when you're approaching a protective style. Now remember, number one was your protective styles aren't protecting anything. Bear that in mind next time you go to get your hair braided. Don't let them do it too tight and make sure it's a style that your hair actually can handle and a style that will allow your hair to thrive. Now the next reason why your protective styling routine is trash is because you're not leaving the styles in long enough. Now personally, if you're leaving an extension style in for two weeks, you're not really getting enough bang for all the effort and the money, <laughs> but mostly the effort because you're manipulating your hair a lot anyway to get it into that style more often than not. And then you're only leaving it in for two weeks then manipulating your hair again to remove it, which is not cute. So you need to leave your protective styles in for a substantial amount of time. Now, what do I mean by substantial? I mean, ideally at least six weeks. If you can only do four before your scalp starts to give you issues, fine. But I'm gonna leave this style in my head for at least six weeks. I'm already um, about to enter week five, so I'm probably going to try and go for another four weeks, ideally. I mean, with this period when we're literally all in the house, running from this biological situation i obviously can't do my hair right now and i'm not trying to do it myself so it's gonna stay in this style as long as i can manage it but i need to find a way to moisturize my hair and actually this leads to some other points y'all number three you are not caring for your hair while it's in the style now what does this entail you might ask it actually entails quite a bit now caring for your hair is not just moisture it's also ensuring that your hair is properly lubricated ensuring that your hair is not rubbing up against anything ensuring that your hair is not experiencing any tension that it's not getting frizzy or tangled while it's inside of that style now it's normal for hair like ours especially to mat when it's in these kinds of styles for extended periods of time but there are certain steps that you can take to avoid these things now if your hair is in a style like this the major thing you need to do is be very conscious when you're installing the style. As you're installing this kind of style, you want to wrap carefully and in such a way that you will actually be able to gently remove the extensions when it's time to take down the hair. You also want to make sure that you prep your hair adequately. So I prepped my hair by deep conditioning. I made sure I did a mild protein treatment as well. I moisturized with several moisturizers sealed with butter and with grease and with oil and I made sure that my scalp was really really clean because I knew I was not going to actually wash my hair for two months. Now I'm still going to try and find a way to moisturize the body of my hair but it's extremely important to care for your hair while it's in protective styles. If you're not caring for your hair, how do you expect it to thrive? It's like traveling, you know, you're in a different environment, your body's in a different place. 
Are you going to not bathe for the two weeks you're out of your comfort zone? No, of course not. You're going to bathe every day, I hope. <laughs> and you're going to make sure that your body is well maintained, even though you're not in the comfort of your home. The same goes for your hair. Now, this is not my hair's normal state, but I'm still going to ensure that my hair is well maintained, that my hair is healthy, that my hair is not crying out for anything, so that my hair can be healthy and happy when it comes out of this style. Now, the next one is that you are not caring for your scalp well in the style. Now, a lot of people tend to neglect their scalp health. I think it's just one of those things that we tend to overlook in the natural hair community. But again, your hair is growing from your scalp. It's not gonna be long and healthy if your scalp is not really, really healthy. So it's important to pay close attention to your scalp health. That means making sure that your scalp is clean, making sure that you can minimize buildup as much as possible, making sure that you're moisturizing your scalp. That's super important and making sure that your scalp is not under duress, that there's no tension. Now, how do I do that? My scalp, again, is very, very dry, so I don't really need to worry about buildup because I'm not producing like hella sebum. I do, however, massage my scalp to coax my own sebum out of the woodwork, so to speak. Digression aside, what I ultimately do to maintain my scalp health in this kind of style is whenever my scalp starts to feel a little bit dry, I will make sure that I spray it with a mixture of distilled water and tea tree. That ensures that no fungus or bacteria inhabits my scalp and causes me issues while I'm wearing this protective style. After that, I seal it with my Sulfur 8 or my Sulfur 8 mix, and you all can check out that video in the description box or in the cards to the right. Your right, not my right. <laughs> Now I know this video took a long time to get up, but it's extremely detailed. So please be sure to watch it so you know exactly how I combat my dry, troubled scalp with this mixture. Now, if you're somebody who has a very oily scalp, you might consider massaging your scalp with the pads of your fingers to continue to break up that sebum and or you could gently cleanse your scalp. There are a lot of ways to do that. And if you all would like a tutorial, please let me know in the comments down below. The next reason why your protective styling regimen sucks, and this is something we actually touched on briefly, is over manipulation to get your hair in the style and then over manipulation to get your hair out of the style. Now, guilty, I'm guilty of this. I've been guilty of this for years, but I stopped these unhealthy hair habits about six or seven years ago now. I used to always blow out my hair prior to getting braids, not knowing that I really didn't need to do that. I would also undo my protective styles on very brittle, dry hair. I wouldn't even bother myself to get some sort of conditioner or spray bottle and take down the hair the proper way. So shame on me. I don't do that anymore. At this point, I don't even use heat on my hair. But I'm ultimately telling you this to caution you and let you know that there's no reason for you to manipulate your hair so much to actually get your hair into a protective style that involves extensions especially. And if you're protective styling with your own hair, which you can with buns, with twists, etc., etc., you also do not need to blow out your hair. There are other ways to stretch your hair without heat, ways that are going to be a lot less strenuous and they're going to yield ultimately healthy outcomes. You feel me? So when I'm prepping my hair for these styles, I, like I said, wash my hair, deep condition it, make sure that it's really nourish and i even allow the person doing my hair to braid it while it's a bit damp that way my hair is more malleable now my hair is resistant my hair is you know that song where lil wayne is like tougher than nigerian hair and everyone was up in arms well my n wasn't lying it's true my nigerian hair is quite tough it's very soft now because I know how to take care of it, but my hair is rigid and resistant. I think that's because it's super low porosity. But ultimately, I don't do things that will stress it out. I try, try, try hard to make sure that it's comfortable. And part of that comfort, again, is doing as little as possible prior to installation whilst making sure I'm really deeply nourishing my hair. Now on the flip side of that, when you're taking down your hair, please be gentle. If you have a bun, make sure that you gently remove any pins or bands used to hold the bun in place. If it's twist, make sure that you lubricate your hair and then begin taking it down. If it's these kinds of locks, make sure that you're cutting off the lock from the end 
and gently unraveling it. Now this hair actually straight up locks up. So you need to be very careful when you're taking it down from your hair so you're not tugging on your hair or removing your hair with it because that would not be cute. <laughs> so these are just a few examples of how to gently take down your hair. Now, as a general rule, it's important to have a spray bottle on deck and make sure that spray bottle is aiding you and dampening your hair so that it loosens up more easily. Another tip, you could have a pre-poo detangler. Those are really, really great. And there's one I'm going to link in the description box down below. I'm also going to put it up on the screen. I can't remember what it's called, but my good friend Diamond introduced it to me, especially because there's that Diva Curl scandal and I can't be using their pre-poo detangler anymore because I don't want my hair to fall out so the next one is very unexpected but you're not taking care of your body and what do I mean by that I'm not talking about the exterior because I mean <laughs> we're pretty poppin I'm talking about the internal environment if you're not taking proper care of your internal environment it will show in your hair if your hair is stunted growth wise it's not growing as quickly from your scalp either genetically speaking you're not predisposed to grow hair quickly or you're not getting the right nutrients in your body now a lot of women are prone to iron deficiency so that's something to watch out for that could stunt hair growth anemia is not cute fam it does a lot of things that are not palatable when it comes to the way your body appears and then of course internally it's really not cute so there's that. And then it's also important to make sure that you're getting vitamins from whole foods. I'm not talking about whole foods, the grocery store, even though I stand them and I think they should sponsor me. I'm talking about your regular, like daily vitamins. You feel me? It's important to ensure that your body is getting the right amount of nutrients so that it will show in your hair, your skin, and your nails. This is something that has really, really helped me. And if you all would like a video on my supplements, please let me know down below. I think I said I would talk about that, but I have yet to. So just let me know if that's something you're actually interested in. So the last thing is super important and believe what you wanna believe, but I sincerely believe in this and it's that you're not being positive. If you don't have a positive outlook on yourself, your body image, your hair especially, then it's not going to thrive. It's not going to be as vibrant, as beautiful, as lush as you want it to be. And that's just the bottom line. There's a lot of power in positive thinking. White people be knowing that ish, which is why they be dominating everything. Why don't we know it in our community? We need to know it. It's very important. If you want your story to change, you need to think positively. Like I'm all about the power of positive thinking. I'm also all about affirmations, like affirming positive things. I'm also, also, also all about writing down positive things and dwelling on those positive things. And above all of those, I'm about praying. So it's super important, whatever you believe, even if you don't believe in God, positive thinking, positive thought goes a long way. Positive speech goes a long way. There are actually studies that literally prove that. So please think positively and will what you want to be into existence. If you want your hair to be long, start saying that your hair is beautiful, your hair is luscious, your hair is long. If you want to be healthy and thick, start saying your hair is healthy, your hair is thick, your hair is vibrant, the color is rich, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Every positive thing that you can think to say, start saying it fam. It will make a huge difference along with these other things when it comes to protective styling. Now as for me, I'm probably gonna keep my hair in protective styles for the next four months. I need to see some gains and I honestly don't have the energy or the time to be having my hair out right now. So as I'm keeping my hair in this protective style, I'm going to make sure that I do everything on this list because I know how they've benefited me and how I've literally seen like about an inch of growth in a month, which is pretty insane. So y'all, that's literally everything. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, please don't forget to give this video one big thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know why else people's protective styles are not trying to pop off in 2020. Again, please share this with all of your friends and your loved ones. And last but never, ever, ever can be least, please subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. I'm so grateful to have you all on board. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Healthy. I love all of you so much and thank you. Thank you for being patient with me always until next time